Amen. Friends, as a thesis verse for the message this morning, would you look at the fifth chapter, fifth verse, excuse me, out of the 29th chapter of Deuteronomy? Would you look at the fifth verse? And reads as follows. I have led you for 40 years in the wilderness. The clothes on your back have not worn out. And the sandals on your feet have not worn out. Friends, with the help of your prayers and under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, I want to preach to you this morning on the subject of patience is love in action. Patience is love in action. Graduates, on this graduation Sunday, your season has finally arrived. I have no idea how each of you individually feels about graduating high school or college, but I remember what it was like when I graduated high school, and I could not wait. I couldn't wait to turn 18, finish high school, spread my wings, and leave Maryland. I couldn't wait to leave my parents' house and get to Atlanta and see all that Atlanta had to offer. I couldn't wait for the freedom that would come from living on my own, making my own decisions and doing what I wanted to do, when I wanted to do it, and how I wanted to do it. I remember my first night as a student staying on the campus of Georgia Tech. My parents had flown back to Maryland, it was time to start classes, and the dorm that I was staying in, there was a courtyard between four buildings. And all the young people were out in this courtyard doing various manner of things, talking and drinking and doing other things. When I was in high school, my curfew after my sophomore year in high school was midnight. I had to be back in my parents' house by 12 a.m. So as the clock struck 11.30, 11.45, 11.55, something intrinsically in me let me know it was about to be midnight. Inexplicably, for no reason at all, right around 11.58, I stood up, started walking back into my dorm. The young lady I happened to be talking to, she was just a friend. Stop it, stop it, I see your face. I see your face already. I see your face, stop it. She was just a friend, you know what I'm saying? The young lady I was talking to said to me, where are you going? And I stopped and I thought, where am I going? I don't have to go to bed. They're not here. They in Maryland. And I walked my happy self back into the courtyard and sat down and proceeded to hang out until 4 o'clock in the morning. Mind you, friends, this was before the day of cell phones. This was before the day of social media. It was back in the day when people hung out and actually communicated, communicated with each other. What was I doing until 4 o'clock in the morning? Stop it. <laughs> Nothing. Just sitting out there, chilling. It was just the fact that I was free. Like the man in Amistad, I couldn't wait to get out of my parents' house and just be free. Like little Webby and Boosie, I couldn't wait to be independent. Like Patti LaBelle, I couldn't wait to be on my own. I was impatient, if not impetuous. I was impatiently waiting to become an adult. Uh, but, but I think it was Jesus in the Gospel of Luke who said, to whom much is given, much is required. Graduates, you have been given the great gift of successful completion on this particular leg of your academic journey. You've been given the opportunity to receive the reward by moving forward into this next phase of life that God has for you. You've been given wonderful families that have reared you to maturity and given you the great gift of seeing the outcome of all their hard work into you, all of their sacrifices for you, all of their dreams of your ancestors made manifest in you. God has given you much, and now it is time to walk forward knowing that much is required of you. But the question we all should be asking in here this morning is, what exactly is required of these people who are graduated high school and college? You will be told over the course of your life, so many things are required of you. 
You will be told you are required to go to college and get good grades and further your academic pursuits. You are required to make good decisions and ensure that you don't mortgage your future. You are required to go and make mama and daddy proud. You are required to gain the skills that are necessary for your career to make you an effective member of society. You are required to go and find a spouse, not just any spouse, but a good spouse. So many people will tell you that now that you have been given much, now that you have graduated high school, much is now required of you. But I want to offer to you this morning that actually none of those things are required of you. The tenacity of your ancestors that's already in your DNA, that's going to take care of your grades and your academic pursuits. The foundation that your parents have poured into you, that will take care of the quality of your decisions. You actually are not required to go to college and make your parents proud because if you look at your parents right now, you're not going to make them any more proud than they already are. Your passion will come. The skills for your career are on the horizon. Your spouse, scripture says, God will provide whenever God is ready. And please don't bring nobody to me too soon. Y'all can't say amen? I ain't ready to do a wedding for y'all yet. So what is required of you as you step into one of the greatest seasons of your life? And the Bible says there is but one thing that is required of you now, and it is patience. You are required to attain the great gift that is patience. The capacity to tolerate time. Because in God's time, scripture says all these things shall be added unto you. For many of us, we can acknowledge in our youth, in our haste to be grown, to be free, to be an adult. Many of the adults in here right now will tell you, we forfeited the patience to appreciate the journey God put us on. We didn't stop in time and recognize all that God was doing with us and how God was doing it. We didn't see how amazing it was that God was not just doing it for the whole world, but God was doing it for me. Patience, brothers and sisters. It is the virtue afforded to those whose time ahead is less than the time they have behind them. And oh, how we wished as we got older that we had attained patience when we were younger. This, my brothers and sisters, is the virtue that Moses is trying to teach to the children of Israel here in the 29th chapter. The virtue that I dare to try to teach to all of us this morning. Whether you know it or not, the 29th chapter of Deuteronomy is actually a graduation ceremony. All of the graduates from the school of the wilderness have been gathered together by the great professor. His name was Moses. Here for a generation, ten times longer than you spent in high school, these Israelite students have journeyed through the school that was the wilderness. And just as you were all assembled together on your graduation day with your fellow graduates sitting next to you, I hope you can see the scene in the 29th chapter. All of the Israelites are graduated together. They are standing assembled together, ready for Moses to graduate them. Moses has assembled them in this place called the plains of Moab. And there, where they had graduated, it was just a stone's throw away from the promised land called Canaan that God had promised them. And just like you... Moses is letting them know it's your time. It's time to show and prove. To put up and shut up. The minor leagues of high school is over. And now it's time to hit the big leagues of college. To exit the big leagues of college and then enter the real big leagues, which is the front office of being an adult. Here they are on the plains of Moab and it's their time. Just as your parents will not journey with you to college, here in the 29th chapter of Deuteronomy, the people are surrounded by a generation of folks that were with them in the wilderness that will not make it to Canaan. I will be with you in spirit. I will be with you by the teachings that I have deposited within you. I will be with you by the fact that I named you. But this walk to Canaan, you must take on your own. I can't walk it for you. You must now journey on your own. Own. It's interesting that not only the students have trouble figuring out that they got to make this journey on their own, the parents have trouble figuring out that they got to make it on their own. In addition to being a pastor, you all know that I'm a college professor. And your parents used to talk to your teachers in high school and used to look at your grades when you were in high school. Well, there's a federal law that says you can't do that in college. 
Still, every year, here comes some parent calling me. My baby failed your class. Why are you talking to me? <laughs> Just so you're clear, I passed the class when I took it. You might want to talk to your child. Well, I want to know how were they graded and what were their grades and, and, and what happened. I can't talk to you about that information. You have to talk to your child. Why? Because your child in the eyes of the law is an adult. And I went and got a PhD so I could teach adults. So you've got to talk to your adult child. I can't go with you to the land of Canaan because God said some of the generation can't go into Canaan. Some of the generation has to stay here in the land of Moab and they will die here. They will not make it into Canaan. So on the 29th chapter, Moses is giving them their last words because even the professor Moses didn't get a chance to go to Canaan. Before they went, he could tell them what classes to take when they got to Canaan, but he doesn't do that. He could tell them how to make good decisions when they get into the college of Canaan, but he doesn't do that. He could attempt to live his life vicariously through them and tell them exactly what they are to do, but he doesn't do that. It is your time now. And Moses had but one message to share to these people. After gathering them all together in their graduation garb, seating them in alphabetical order, preparing their diplomas and degrees to be handed to them, with the generations that shall not make it to Canaan sitting on the periphery, just, just as your parents and family sat on the periphery in the stadium or auditorium where you graduated, cell phone cameras ready, a slight tear in their eye, Moses has gathered the graduates at graduation and he said these words. You have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt. The great trials that your eyes saw, the signs and great wonders. Translation, Israelite nation, you have experienced how your heavenly parent raised you these years in the wilderness. Just as you've experienced how your parents have raised you from birth until now. You saw the trials and the great wonders. You, you saw the good days and the bad days. You saw the mountain highs and the valley lows. As the Israelites learned of God, God learned of them in the high school of the wilderness. And your family learned of you just as you learned in your family. But he says, I'm in verse 4, but to this day, the Lord has not given you a mind to understand or eyes to see or ears to hear. Wait a minute, God. What, what do you mean? We, we were there for 40 years in the wilderness. We were there for 18 years with mom and dad from birth until now. What do you mean that we didn't have a mind to understand or eyes to see or ears to hear? We were there, God. We received the lessons that our parents taught us. We were there. We were not always perfect, but our parents weren't always perfect either. We were there for all of the joys and some of the pain. And, and in that pain and imperfection, we still made it to this happy day. We made it to graduation, right? We, we were there, God. We did see it. We did understand it. Our eyes were open. Our ears were open. And God responds, responds to them in verse 5. He says, yes, you were there with Moses. Yes, you grew up with your parents and your siblings. You grew up in these schools. And you're ready to move forward onto this college campus. But look at verse 5. But it was I. It was I, the Lord your God, who actually led you for 40 years in the wilderness. Stay with me. Israelites, you saw Moses every day. Just like young people, you saw your parents every day. You saw your siblings. You saw your friends. You saw your coaches. You saw your extended family. You saw your teachers. But what you weren't ready to see then, you must be ready to see now. Because you are going into a space and a season of your life where you are not going to see your parents every day. You are not going to see the same friends and the same coaches and the same extended family and the same teachers. And we must realize that if I was dependent on the people that I saw in high school, how will I make it in college if they're not there? If I'm only dependent on the people who blessed me when I was in high school, how will I make it when they are not there? And what Moses is telling the children of Israel through God is what you could not understand 
understand then that you must understand now. What you could not see back then that you must see now. What you could not hear back then that you must hear now is that every day of your life it has been the Lord your God who's been keeping you. Every day of your life it's been the Lord your God who has brought you through the wilderness of adolescence. It, every day of your life it was the Lord your God who brought you through being a teenager and every day of your life it will be the Lord your God who will bring into young adulthood. I would love to tell you that the people that you grew up with in high school, I would love to tell you that the teachers that taught you in middle school and high school, I would love to tell you that the parents who reared you into maturity and the grandparents who provided for you, I would love to tell you that they're going to be there always. But the truth of the matter is, they won't. The truth of the matter is that if I don't learn a lesson very early before I go out into this world as an adult, if I don't get this lesson before I leave my parents' house, then my parents might have to be nervous about what's going to happen to me. But if you really want to make mama and daddy proud, if you, if you really want to put a smile on their face, if, if you really want to put joy in their heart, look at verse 5, then it's time for me to realize this whole time the clothes on my back have not worn out, the sandals on my feet have not worn out. I have always, verse 6, had a provision of food to eat. I have always had something to drink and it has always been the Lord my God who kept me. Yes, you have amazing parents, but God said, I sent you those parents. Yes, you lived in an amazing home. I provided that home. Yes, you were able to go to a great high school. I provided that high school. Every single thing in your life that has been a blessing or been amazing or filled you up or kept you, the Lord your God said to the children of Israel, it has been me the whole time. In your good days and your bad days, God has patiently loved you. When you were up and you were down, God has patiently loved you. When you cared about God or even when you weren't thinking about God, God has patiently loved you. The best thing I could do for my parents is not go to college and get a 4.0, although you should do that. The best thing I can do for my parents is not go to college and make great decisions, though you should do that. The best thing I can do for my parents is not figure out what my purpose is and get busy working towards my career that is going to financially sustain me, although you should do that as well. But the best thing I can do for my parents to give them that blessed assurance when I'm no longer in that household is I should recognize that in him I live and have my being. In God, I wake up this morning and in God, I go to sleep at night. It has been the Lord my God every day. There they are at graduation. They're just about to go into Canaan. God is telling them Moses ain't going with you. Some of your friends ain't going with you. Some of your ancestors ain't going with you. And he conclude, concludes his commencement speech with these words. Look at verse 9. Therefore, diligently observe the words of this covenant in order that you may succeed in everything that you do. That, that you may succeed. Here are the words of the covenant. God has patiently loved you. And God will always patiently love you. Now as you go into the college of your Canaan, now, you must respond by patiently loving your God back. If you are patient and willing to wait on the Lord, it is God who will show you these next few years what eyes have not seen and what ears have not heard. If you are patient and willing to love this God who created you, God will bring you to success in everything that you do. If you are patient and willing to love this God, God will show you the fullness of God's love just as you are. Because I'm waiting on you to get to Canaan, waiting on you to get to this moment, God has been patient. And it has been the activity of God's love in your life. I've come this morning to tell you that your patience can be exactly the same. Everything that God intends for you to come in your life is going to come. And there's nothing you can do to make it come one day faster.
Everything that God intends for you, as your name has been written in the book, as you think about the plan of your life, God has already prepared before you were ever born. And there's nothing you can do. There's nothing anyone else can provide. There's nothing anyone can sell you or tell you or convince you. There's no charlatan who can convince you that they can make God move one moment faster than God was already going to move. This is why the psalmist said, I waited patiently on the Lord. And he heard my cry. Be patient, young people, as you have graduated. Be patient as you move forward and matriculate through college. Patiently progress through and attain your degree. Patiently develop friendships and get to know people and, and into romantic relationships. Patiently think about the gifts and the skills and the desires that you have and go into your career. And as you patiently move forward everywhere that you go, take God with you because the Lord said I will be with you always even until the end of your days I can promise you the activity of God's love has been present in your life through his patience and loving you and if you would respond with that same patience you would show love in action to your God God bless you